Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today's video is going to be me going over what's coming this month in Dragalia Lost. A heads up, because this month, on the 27th, because I read this beforehand because I was too excited to learn when we're going to be learning about the second anniversary stuff. Um, so the second anniversary of Dragalia Lost is on the 27th, and they always like to keep um, for I, they did it for the 1.5 and they did it for the first year anniversary. They like to keep a, Dra a Dragalia Digest with them. So that means that the Dra Dragalia Digest is a video that they like to release that usually hypes up the things that are coming. So there is basically next to no info on here because a lot of the info they're just going to wait and save for the video. There's still some stuff coming of course because the 27th is a long way away. So let's get into it. That's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. Uh, if you do, remember to leave a like, comment about what you're excited for this month, though I have a feeling that everyone is just going to say the anniversary, um, which I don't blame them. I'm excited for it too. Uh, and let's go. And if you want more Dragalia Lost stuff, you can follow me. All right. So here's the start. They're talking about the theme song, which is Checkmate featuring Emma. Um, this is from the Great Omens looking event, the Agents of the Goddess. Uh, this is talking about the Tartarus Wrath boss, where we fought a weird version of Darth Maul. Here's Thor that they just recently released, of course. So plans for this month, let's start it with here. Planet Spirals for Light Attuned Adventurers Estelle, Luca, and Lucretia will be unlocked on September 2nd, which is really close by. Um... I feel like the recent track records for Mana Spirals has not been good, especially since it feels like some characters had their entire way of playing kind of messed with. Um, lucky for them, I guess, is that Estelle, Luca, and Lucretia really don't have a playstyle to speak of. Luca kind of suffers from the fact that he is, I think, a... He, one, has a very good Gala unit that is also light, so that automatically makes it hard for him to function in light. Especially in the current Agito, which I believe he is the highest after Thor. He is currently the most um, damage dealing. Don't quote me on that one, because I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty positive Gala Luca is like top of the top at the moment. Um, Lucretia, she... I really like her. Um, she's kind of... Um, I forget. Literally, Thor has his effect, and I literally can't remember it. Um, uh, energy. Energize. There you go. She was kind of focused on that early on in the beginning. Um, she's kind of fallen off pretty... She fell hard. Fell off pretty hard. And Estelle, I don't remember anything about her, to be honest. So, yeah. These make sense for Mana, mana Spirals. Uh, I don't feel like these are going to be the only ones we're going to get this month, but these are just the, th the first three that they're showing. Alright, and a defensive event will be held in mid-September, sure. A certain pair will play a big role, and the story will focus on the secrets of their origins. You'll be able to use an autoplay feature on beginning, standard, and expert difficulties to play through maps that are designed to be played without much hassle. Also starting with this event, Japanese voices will be added to the defensive events. The story on, on in Onslaught events and defensive events is a bit different from the story in the main campaign. Raid events and facility events, so I'm hopeful that the addition of voice dialogue will draw players even further into the game's storytelling. That's cool. Um, from what I understand, it's actually way more expensive to get Japanese VO than it is American... Uh, American... Uh, English VO. Um, probably because so much of the JP um, voice actors are in high demand and I also think some of it might also be corona related but who knows at this point uh, very cool I know some people prefer Japanese and I wish them for it I, they make cool sounds for sure uh, revival of Fractured Futures raid event. Ooh, coming in late September. Fractured Futures is the raid event that was during. Yeah, this event debuted last year as part of the. Well, let me read it. As part of this first anniversary celebration. Now it's coming back. You'll have a chance to add event exclusive adventures. Audric and, and the Dragon Parallel. <laughs> the Dragon Parallel Sortie Arc to your team if you haven't already. Um. Audric, I don't know the current status of Audric because he's Shadow and I feel like I'll, he's an older Shadow unit, so I kind of feel like he might get a Mana Spiral with this, but let's wait and see. Fractured Futures is maybe one of the coolest events they've had because you it has one of the best, I think, bosses in the entire game of Dracalia. Um When he first showed up, it was the coolest thing ever. Um, and it was during a perfect time where the game was still, at least for me, I'll say... Because of the level of 
good I was at the game, it was actually still challenging because there was a good chance that um, I would still lose it whenever Fractured Futures happened. We actually recently had the boss come over, but he was in his original first form, which is his giant big old form. So not the form. It's the Frieza form is the one I'm talking about. Um, anyway, let's continue on. This event provides a close look at the heart of the Dragalia Lost story and setting, so I hope that you have an experience and yet it will take your opportunity to do so. Yeah, the story is also really good. A interlude will be added to Chapter 15 of the main campaign in late September. Master difficulty for Celia, the water attuned boss of the Agido Uprising, will be added in early October. I hope you're looking forward to testing your strength. Mm -hmm. Dragalia Lost will celebrate its second anniversary on September 27th. Like the first anniversary, the second will feature a variety of celebratory events, including a raid event related to the main campaign. Playing for the recently added Chapter 15 will ensure that you have caught up to the latest story beats and you can enjoy the event to the fullest. We're working on more than just more than just story though. Look forward to going up against all new raid boss too. Uh yeah, it's 27th. They really don't mention much, but there's a reason for that, and I'll continue going on forward. Uh, future updates. Since the next update will be releasing uh, during the second anniversary, we plan to implement a variety of adjustments to existing features and add new ones while addressing the game balance. Included in these changes will be large-scale adjustments to the balance of adventurers, dragons, and weapons. At the moment, the damage output and skill performance of shadow-attuned adventurers is stronger than those of other elements, leading players to prioritize their inclusion in teams regardless of whether or not Shadow has the elemental advantage, in particular, uh, in a particular quest. While we don't feel that damage output that skill performance needs to be completely equal across all five elements, we recognize that the Shadow Attune adventures are noticeably stronger than their counterparts at this time. Yup, that's true. To address this imbalance, we plan to adjust the other four elements so they perform at a slightly high standard, at a similar high standard, my bad. We may have to adjust the strength of enemies alongside these changes, but we'll take care to we'll take care to not to alter the current gameplay experience too much. These balance adjustments will be implemented in an update in late September. The weapon system will be made easier to understand in the next update. Uh, actually, before I get into that, let's get into this because this is the this is the it's been not uh, it's been known. For maybe quite a while, I want to say since maybe around, you started seeing it around Galicleo, but at a certain point it became really an issue where you just said, are they shadow? Because if they are, they just win. I think it actually got worsened by the um, shadow Agido being so easy because of all the shadow units. So all shadow basically had the easiest fight and all the Agidos on extreme. Um, so easy that a lot of the higher players just farmed it solo themselves um and it created this environment where basically all shadow and before that actually shadow units were already kind of the best of the best but now they have one the easiest access to their weapons to the most damage and also they can just hurt every single element and it doesn't matter um so it's been an issue because even now with the new light agito that just released um people are still just using shadow units because they don't see a point in using the light units because they're slower. The only exception is Hawk, and that's because Hawk is cheesy. So I think it's good that they don't have to specifically nerf shadow and just make it so that everyone is basically on their level. The funny thing is, is that um, if everyone is as crazy broken, but then they also make the bosses harder to compensate that, um, then what ends up happening is <laughs> What really ends up happening is that Shadow actually just gets put down to everyone's level. Everyone gets put up to their level, but now that everyone's at Shadow's level, that makes Shadow no different from any of the other ones. Um, it's a way of, I guess, technically nerfing an entire element without actually nerfing. Because they never at any point say that they are changing the Shadow elements, the, the Shadow adventures. They're, being, they're remaining untouched. They're changing everything else around them. Uh, which means that all those shadow units will be as good as they always have been. The only difference is that now everything else will change around it. What the changes will be, we don't know. Because uh, this is vague. I don't know what this means. I don't know if this, but they mean all, I don't know if they're going to be doing it individually by unit. Because let me tell you right now, if in their process of making wind better, because uh, there are definitely some wind units that need to be better. Not all of them though. Like, like I said with Hawk. Then we're going to run into a problem, not that um, 
Uh, we're not going to run into a problem that Shadow Attuned Adventures are too good. We're going to run into a problem that Hawk is too good. And then at that point, nobody uses anyone else but Hawk. So it's a very, very difficult thing to balance. And I kind of understand why it's probably taken them this long. I would say that it's also been kind of... I mean, if you look at some of the most recent Shadow units in particular, um, they haven't been... Uh, crazy broken like there you there used to be a time where they, when they release a shadow unit it was like all right so how crazy is their dps going to be now how strong are they and the answer is right now they're not really they're not like breaking numbers they're doing perfectly fine um depending on what kind of player you are that you were doing perfectly fine or you don't see a reason to have them and whatever that's your prerogative um but I don't know, it's a very hard thing to kind of balance, especially since they're, work, they're, they're basically walking a very weird type rope. Where if they screw this up, this is kind of the end for all things coming forward. If they... these large scale adjustments have to matter in order to affect everything. If it doesn't, if we're still... after this change, if Shadow is still used in absolutely everything, they've kind of screwed up. There's no going around about it like i don't know <sighs> we'll see it's a hard thing to balance um let's talk about the west the weapon system now uh currently there are a lot of weapons players can craft and figuring out which ones can make can uh figure out which ones to make can be confusing players also obtain weapons as rewards but often there is not enough space for them players could dismantle these weapons but can be frustrated as well <laughs> but this can be so frustrating as well it's true in the next update, we'll adjust the way weapons are obtained and upgraded with the aim of alleviating the above concerns. Since this will be a large departure from the current system, we'll provide further details in a notification before the update is released. Uh, good, because this system currently sucks. It's so bad. I don't even like dismantle them. I just go to hit send, go to hit sell, and sell once it seems like I don't have space for any more weapons. And to be honest, I wish there was a 5 and lower or something, because some of the 5s I pick up I just don't need anymore. Um, and some of that has to be with me being a higher player up there, and some of it also has to be with them no longer focusing on those weapons anymore. Those weapons just don't matter as much anymore. They might matter in the future when they implement that system that, like, benefits you for collecting, but... You know, as of right now, there's no real good reason to have them. In addition to what I've covered here, we plan to include further gameplay improvements and enhancements in the next update, and we'll release a Dragalia Digest in the late September with more information. There you go. Like I said before, Dragalia Digest is where all the info, chances are they'll go into this a little bit more. Maybe not the weapon stuff, they'll maybe briefly mention the weapon stuff and then kind of be like we'll save it later for the update but yeah dragalia digest is where we're gonna have all the cool stuff <laughs> that's where we're gonna have hopefully multis a whole bunch of tickets and um hopefully here's what i current think is that i one i think that there is a two collabs coming one is gonna have to be a reprint of the monster hunter collab and the other one has to be a brand new collab um it can't and i mean brand new meaning no fire emblem and not mega man Actually, they could probably bring- no, don't bring back Mega Man unless they're gonna bring back Mega Man and make him proper, I guess. Meaning, there will be an actual Mega Man banner. Like, otherwise, I don't- I don't care. Um, especially as someone who has Mega Man. Obviously, for people who don't have Mega Man, they probably want Mega Man. And to be honest, Mega Man's not as bad as he was on launch. Um, they've gone a lot of ways to make things better. Also, three summon vouchers, Blessed Ethan Ashes, and Quality Honey 10 are waiting- uh, for that. The next summon this month will be posted around October 1st, 2020. So, that's what's going on in September. We're gonna hit the second year, man. Two years of Dragalia lost. Um, it's funny because I never realized how good Dra I always thought that Dragalia lost was to, at least back in the day, and I'll say this kind of with an understanding of one, Corona has happening and they need to make up a little bit more money, um, the game was so generous that it didn't seem like, um, it ever made it enough any money. And then someone told me, like, you do realize that Dragalia Loss is usually in the top 10, right? And I was like, what? And I was like, yeah, there, it's probably one of the most, for being an IP that isn't really attached to anything, it actually makes a decent amount of money. And I was like, holy crap, that's great. Cause it means it gets to stick around and it's great that it's actually worked out. Um, I still kind of fear for its future, especially with Nintendo after Animal Crossing kind of learning like, oh, we don't actually need the mobile market 
Um, and I, I feel like that's kind of dangerous, and that's a kind of a dangerous thing, because once you look at the Nintendo mobile um, data, you see that a lot of their mobile games don't make as much... They don't make as much money that justifies their cost. And trust me, they're, th stuff like the theme song by Checkmate, um, like made by actual Japanese artists, like all the different theme songs, that shit is not cheap. So I hope that Dragalia makes enough money for them to keep it going around. Because uh, I really do love this game. I think it's great. I love the people who play it. Everyone who plays it. Even the ones who end up not liking my stuff always seem like pretty good dudes. Because they never tell me to my face and they don't like me. Uh, so I don't know. Two years, man. Two years. So that's going to be this month in Dragalia. Obviously, sit tight because 27 is a long way away. I still fully expect there to be another Gala banner. So... Uh, probably sometime mid-September and before you say like that doesn't make any sense I'm gonna say right now Gala Banner no longer has a set time if this mid-September event happens and there's no immediate banner we're getting a gala right before the second year anniversary so it just doesn't feel like they would wait that entire month that just doesn't seem what they do anymore and if anything it's probably a Dragalia remix but hey we'll wait and see that's the end of today's video everyone I hope you liked it and I'll see you guys in the next one and peace out Bye-bye. Nido. I forgot to hit top record.